Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, Jamal Mubarak. I'm glad that you are all here uh, together on this Friday. And uh, we'll begin now with the khutbah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Praise belongs to Allah. We praise Allah and we ask Allah for guidance and forgiveness. And when we seek protection in Allah from the malice of our own souls and the evil of our own actions, whom Allah guides, no one can lead them astray, and whom Allah makes astray, no one can lead them back to the right path. I bear witness that there is no deity but Allah alone, having no associates, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the servant and messenger of Allah. O oh, you who have faith, have reverence for Allah and always say a word directed to the truth that Allah may make your conduct whole and sound and forgive you your sins, that they obey Allah and, mess and the messenger. Those that, that obey Allah and the messenger have attained the highest achievement. Assalamu alaikum, my dear sisters and brothers. Alhamdulillah, we are all here again in this space to experience another Ramadan together. What an honor it is to, to give the khutbah, the first khutbah of this Ramadan. And this is our fourth Ramadan with Muslim space. And some of you have been here since the very beginning. Others embarked on this journey with us a year or two ago, while others are tuning in for the very first time. But all of you have come here for a reason. And no matter what the reason is, you have dedicated part of your day to take a pause from the busyness just to be here. You've taken the time to be here. And it's time that I wanna to highlight today in this talk, the uniqueness of time. In hindsight, I should have focused on the uniqueness of sleep as I am exhausted. So a preemptive apology if I am less than coherent. In any case, today I would like that by the end of this talk, we will depart this gathering with the intent to center our thoughts around time. This Ramadan has caused me to reflect on last Ramadan and the pandemic. Last year, we submitted ourselves to the conclusion that we will be experiencing a Ramadan like none other in our lifetime or ever before. A Ramadan where we couldn't be in the real life company of one another, that we couldn't come together for the heightened worship Ramadan brings nor the heightened socializing, but instead had to rely on technological connectivity. The sadness we felt was soon replaced with contentment in that we could now focus our devotion to Allah in a new way. Yes, the specialness of Ramadan was gone, but we replaced it with an acceptance that this shift was only temporary and a responsibility for the greater good of humanity. This Ramadan, Although alhamdulillah, many of us are vaccinated, we are back where we found ourselves last year. Some of you may be happy about this, having adapted and enjoyed more solitude, uh, while others are frustrated that it's one more year of non-normalcy, another Ramadan yearning for community and connection. And how many Ramadans do we have in our lifetime? 70, 80? Likely not too many more than that. So two socially distanced Ramadan uh, is not a significant amount or not a significant amount. It is perfectly okay to be sad and frustrated about our situation. But what if we shifted our thinking a bit? What if instead of thinking this is another Ramadan without tarawih or in-person iftars and prayers, we saw this as another Ramadan where we can give more focus to the divine. Another Ramadan free from the many extracurricular distractions. Maybe this is something to remind ourselves of. I know I need to do more of that. How fortunate are we that we have been gifted another blessed month that is heavier on the deen rather than the dunya? What if this was our last Ramadan? Not a far-fetched idea considering the massive losses we have all witnessed this past year. May Allah grant forgiveness and entrance to Jannah for all those who perished over these last 12 months. Those who had hoped that they'd have another Ramadan, those who didn't even know their time was up. On the first day of Ramadan just this week, a friend of mine lost her younger brother very suddenly at the, at the age of 25. He wasn't even to, able to complete his first fast of this month. His family had excitedly welcomed the onset of Ramadan, but found themselves at a janazah before sunset. And we ask, I ask Allah to put peace and solace in, in their hearts. The time we have on earth is limited and only Allah knows what has been allocated for each of us. And time plays a very important role in our lives. It has started from the very first day on, in this world and would never stop even for a second until our last moments in this world. In the whole life cycle, time flows like running water. We could not pause it or reverse it. Past, present, future, all depends on time. 
If we had good memories in the past, that is just because of the quality of time which we valued at that moment. We should know the worth of time because every passing second, minute, hour is is pa that pass that passes does not come back at any cost. Now, on the flip side, like many of you, I've often wished there was sorry on the same track. I've often wished that there was more time in each day, more hours to get things done, more time to spend with family and friends, more time to binge watch a new show, or more time just to sleep and recharge. But we should also wish that there were more hours to dedicate to Allah, more time to worship in the infinite possible ways. Allah mentions the importance of time in Surah Al-Dariyat, that time is limited for us, and that our purpose of being created was is to worship. Quote, I created jinn, Allah says to us, I created jinn and mankind only to worship me. I want no provisions from them, nor do I want them to feed me. God is the provider, the Lord of power, the ever mighty. Verses 56 through 58. Can we take these verses not only as a reminder, but also as a challenge? How can we increase our worship throughout the day? Oftentimes we are told increased worship is in prayers or fasting or dhikr. But there are so many more ways to dedicate your time to increased worship. How can we weave devotional worship to our creator in all aspects of our day? You know, I think we can start by just when we wake up in the morning, thanking and praising Allah and doing that often and regularly. We should develop a habit. Say, Alhamdulillah, great, you know, all praises be to God for everything that we have. If your food is delicious, if your uh, clothes are clean, if you have a warm, comfortable house to be in, if you have a place to go to work, if you have family and friends, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, we can't say that enough. We must develop that into a habit. When we want something, we cannot take it for granted. We must say, inshallah. When we see something, subhanallah. When we are amazed, mashallah. Praising God often, when you develop that habit, you are, you are putting Allah on the forefront. Another way that we can, can offer worship is by expressing kindness and compassion to others and ourselves. You know, maybe it's your job to take the trash out, you know, um, maybe it's your spouse's job to do it or your parent, you know, do you express thankfulness that you get to have that opportunity to do that, to care for your family or that you have someone in your family who cares for you? Uh, bringing someone a snack, a glass of water, all of these ways are being, uh, of being compassionate and kind are, are, are a form of worship. Um, you know, a, 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 a concept that has sort of come up in the last few years is mindfulness. And we can't have enough mindfulness. Mindfulness is a form of worship. When we are mindful of our existence, we're mindful of our surroundings. When we, are, when we recognize uh, the world and the community in which we live in, the people who are around us, um, not knowing all, everything about them, but just being mindful of them, being aware. Uh, you know, there are, there are ways where we can worship if we were to restrict ourselves, which is, of course, what Ramadan um, is intended for us to, to do, to train ourselves, to control ourselves. So not only control ourselves with, with gluttony, right, with overeating, overindulgence, but control our anger, our frustration, our retaliation. You know, if we restrict our words, that Allah disproves of, then we will eventually restrict our actions that Allah disproves of. Um, of course, this goes on. We can we can work on reducing because we're all guilty of this. You know, eliminating backbiting and gossip. This is sort of uh, you know it's it's sort of part and parcel for our society that we'd like to do this. But if we maybe just pause and and you know try not to spread news that is unnecessary, um, maybe information that you know that could make someone. Uh, look bad in the eyes of others, um, talking bad about someone. If we just reduce that, you know, that that's an easy thing to reduce. That is a form of worship. So while you're going about your day and routine, can you take advantage of these many opportunities to worship? You know, all of us have these, these, the, this ability to reduce our ego and that in, in, in place, we, we, we replace it with a remembrance of Allah right? When we reduce our ego, we end up elevating Allah. That is a form of worship. That is taqwa. And Allah reminds us in Surah, Surah Muhammad, verse 33, believers, obey God and the messenger. Do not let your deeds go to waste. 
So let us make the most of our deeds. We can make each deed, mundane as it may be, enhanced with goodness. Don't just cook dinner for your food, but thank Allah for the opportunity to cook dinner for your food. Don't just do your homework, but thank Allah for the, for the ability to go to school and to learn and to increase your knowledge. So although it doesn't happen too often, there are moments in which we, in which we wish time would move faster, especially these days when we're wishing for Maghrib to arrive faster. And waiting is, is uh, probably one of the most disliked aspects of life. These days, it seems like every innovation is, uh, is centered around reducing the amount of time spent waiting. Two-day delivery is now standard, and I'm sure many of us are willing to pay just a bit more to get our, our items on our doorstep sooner. Remember TV commercials are waiting a full seven days for your favorite show to air? I am always amazed that my kids will never have to experience the level of waiting that is called for when you, when you are wanting your favorite song to come on the radio. Now they just tell me, tell the car to play it. I'm sure my parents were amazed by the things that came so easily and immediately to us. My mother had to wait for a letter to arrive from overseas if she wanted to hear from her parents. Now she chats with her siblings on FaceTime and WhatsApp in an instant, despite being thousands of miles apart, subhanAllah. So I, I encourage myself first, and I encourage all of you to utilize those moments of waiting to increase worship, savoring the downtime and filling it with goodness. We are all so busy. So maybe those times when we aren't, we can dedicate, our, dedicate it to ourselves some self-care so that when we are busy again, we can be more efficient. So even just thinking of Allah and the bounties you have in your life is a form of worship. Say Alhamdulillah often and regularly. Keep Allah on your heart, mind, and tongue at all times. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said that time is one of the blessings given by Allah. Hence, we should take advantage of time before it passes, and there would be nothing left in our hands except regret and regret, regret and grief. Years have fixed months, months have fixed years, days have fixed hours, and so on. It means that in terms of time, Allah gives equally gives equal opportunity to all. And that the quoted hadith uh, from the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, says, "Take advantage of five questions before five other questions: your youth before you get old, your health before getting sick." your wealth be before becoming poor, your time before you become preoccupied, and your life before your death. I say these words of mine, and I ask Allah for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. My thanks and gratitude belong to Allah, the Lord of all humankind, and I ask Allah to bless and bestow peace on Prophet Muhammad. So the last thing I want to chat with you about is what I started at the beginning, what I mentioned is the uniqueness of time. We are often told that time is a gift from God and only God knows how much time we will have on this earth. So make the most of it. I mentioned the very same thing just a minute ago. And of course that is true, but I want to explore just a little deeper. Like so much of what Allah has created in our world, our understanding of time is limited. I came across a quote by uh, the astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, which said, quote, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you, end quote. And when we begin to think about the universe, we soon realize just how small we are. It could very well be that the purpose of the universe is to remind us of that smallness, uh, that despite all the fantastic advancements humans have made and how much we have discovered in our universe, its vastness uh, magnifies the reality that we are so tiny and insignificant to all except Allah. And there are so many complexities of the universe and they're all on display. Sorry, they are all but a display of Allah's ability to create. And among his unique creations is that of time. Our existence operates on a timeline. It's a one-way road. There is a past, a present, and a future, and we only move forward. And like I mentioned earlier, we, what we can carry with us are only the memories of the past. Um, and those memories that we carry are only ours. We cannot carry the memories of anyone else. But Allah doesn't exist on that path. Allah doesn't move across time with us. Allah sees everything all at once. This is sort of one of those things I heard once and it kind of blew my mind. We move on a line, past, the present, the future, and Allah sees everything in one snapshot. 
everything. All people, all times, all spaces, a lot can see in a split second. And that is just so hard to wrap our head around. You know, humans have over centuries, we've dissected time into smaller and smaller measurements. And yet, no matter how small we measure time, we cannot ever identify a now or even the, the, the amount of time it takes for Allah to see everything because Allah doesn't exist on that dimension. Even within a nanosecond, there is a range. We move through time and Allah is static. Time is what Allah has created, created for us. He could have created us to exist on a different plane or dimension, but he gave us time. Yet Allah can move us along our created time in a manner that we aren't even aware of. Allah says in Surah Al-Kahf about the inhabitants of the cave, quote, you would have thought they were awake, though they lay asleep. We turn them over to the right and the left with their dog stretched out, stretch out its four legs at the entrance. If you had seen them, you would have turned and run away filled with terror of them. In time, we woke them and they began to question one another. One of them asked, how long have you been here? And some answered, a day or part of a day. But then others said, your Lord knows best how long you have been here. So I will leave you with the request that you contemplate the uniqueness of time and carry your thoughts with you. Allah has given us our time. Allah has given us our time for us to worship, but also Allah has given us the creation of time. Oh Allah, please accept our good deeds forgive our shortcomings and missteps and allow us to experience much more time together. Oh Allah, grant us the good things in this world and the good things in the next life and save us from the punishment of the fire. Oh Allah, aid us in accepting the test tribulations of this life and give us the strength to overcome any challenge we may face. Oh Allah, rid us of our anxiety and our sorrow and replace in us a sense of serenity and tranquility. Oh Allah, we hope for your mercy, do not leave us to ourselves, even for the blinking of an eye. Correct each of our affairs for us. There is none worthy of worship but you. If I have said anything of truth, it is from Allah alone, and my gratitude goes to, goes to Allah. And if I have said anything that was not of truth, that that is from my own ego, and I ask for forgiveness from that transgression. Amin.